Hi, uh, my name is John Park. I'm a PhD student under the supervision of Professor Robert Heath. And in this talk, uh, we are going to talk about the uh, performance analysis of a pairwise dynamic multi user joint transmission. Uh, joint transmission is a class of a cooperation method, and uh, this requires the data exchange among to a corporate base station by a backhaul. Uh, and there are uh, two major classes of a joint transmissions. Uh, actually, uh, this case, which is called a single joint transmission, uh, two corporate uh, base stations send the same symbol to the same user, and this mainly targeting to enhance the uh, SINR performances. But uh, multi joint transmission, which is on our focus, the corporate base stations send an independent symbol uh, to the two independent users while nullifying the intra cluster interference like this. And this mainly aims to enhance some uh, multiplexing gain because it, uh, it sends two uh, in independent symbols to uh, two different users. Uh, we also consider the dynamic clustering as the clustering based VS cooperation method. Now, uh, it is well known actually that it is impossible to cooperate a whole entire network due to its associated overhead. Uh, for this reason, clustering-based uh, cooperation uh, approach is more practical, and the dynamic uh, clustering is, uh, is known as an effective approach to reduce the out-of-cluster out interference, actually. And so the performance of the dynamic uh, multi-joint joint transmission is worse to be uh, investigated because dynamic clustering is also good, and the multi joint transmission is uh, also known as the, the effective approach for a cooperative method. However, uh, there are some several uh, analytical difficulties in the characterizing the SIR. So this is our SIR uh, function. And uh, it has a complicated function. Actually, uh, the SIR consists of a complicated function of enclosed geometry. Uh, and then we resolve this uh, difficulty by reformulating the multi joint transmission beam forming signal model. And also, uh, the out-of-cluster interference, uh, actually, it is hard to uh, calculate the whole uh, aggregated uh, interference coming from the outside of cluster. So to resolve this difficult analytical difficulty, uh, we adopt the uh, stochastic geometry model. Uh, there was uh, much prior work that analyzed the corporate networks uh, built up of stochastic geometry, actually. Uh, first, uh, in 20, uh, 2012, Akum and Dr. Hees uh, tackled the tackle to analyze the random BS clustering with CVF. And uh, 2013, and, uh, and also 2013, uh, dynamic clustering with late splitting method and dynamic clustering with single joint transmission were characterized. And 2014, dynamic clustering with CVF and ICIC also uh, are also analyzed and our uh, paper is placed on this, and we uh, tackle the uh, dynamic clustering with uh, multi joint transmission. Uh, as a network model, uh, we consider the base stations are located according to a homogeneous Poisson point process. And also, we characterize the corporate region as a, a second order Brunner regions to clarify our concept. Uh, specifying the multi joint transmission beam forming, uh, we employ the distributed zero forcing. So you can see that uh, when we apply the distributed zero forcing beam forming here, uh, there's a, when and the perfect CSIT is assumed, we have a zero intra cluster interference like O in here. But uh, by applying the distributed zero forcing here, uh, the actually our uh, desired channel gain is also modified. This is a key difference things uh, compared to a centralized, centralized conventional zero forcing beam former. And we also assume the some power constraint here. And uh, to characterize this modification of uh, desired channel gain is the uh, key difficult things to uh, characterize the multi joint transmission. Here we introduce the performance metric. Uh, we'll, we will look, uh, as we mentioned before, uh, we will look the SIR, and the SIR is characterized by using uh, in cluster geometry, which is fixed. And uh, 
Uh, and the, actually, more particularly, the enclosed geometry is defined as the ratio between the desired BS and the corporate BS, BS's distance. And also, uh, we also consider the uh, coverage probability of the SIR uh, uh, as, we, as we can see in this. Now we show the summary of the main theorem. Uh, the desired channel gain uh, distribution is derived like uh, in this form. And as we observe in this form, uh, we can see that the desired, the desired channel gain is distorted in amount of this, uh, this value. And, and there is a, uh, actually by this uh, value, the desired channel gain is distorted and uh, compared to a conventional zero central large zero forcing beam forming. Also, uh, by leveraging these expressions, uh, we also derive our roll bound of SL distribution by leveraging uh, as I mentioned, the, the key lemma we derived. Now we introduce the proof sketch of lemma one. The, as we mentioned before, we reformulate the zero forcing beam forming signal model like this. Uh, the key idea is that we can separately write a channel fading matrix here and the uh, geometric matrix like this. Then, uh, in each beamforming vector is formed by the multiplication between the inverse of the uh, geometric matrix and the orthogonal vector of the channel fading matrix. So, we can write this uh, beamforming vector as the two, uh, the multiplication between the two uh, matrix and the vector. So, this is the, uh, the geometric matrix whitening, whitening matrix and this is uh, the orthogonal vector of the uh, channel fading matrix. So, uh, so here we provide some uh, verification. And comparing the derived analytical expression with the simulation result, uh, we see that our analysis result is tightly matched uh, with the simulation result. And in addition to that, we also observe the, 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 the the distributed zero forcing beam former actually degrades some performance compared to uh, the ideal cases. And as we mentioned, as we explained before, this is because the, this, our desired channel gain is distorted by distributed zero forcing. Now, uh, by leveraging the performance analysis result, uh, we characterize the, uh, how much cooperation gain we can get in a particular in, in cluster geometry. So, in assumption that where each user is located close uh, to its own base stations, uh, which means that the, actually the geometric matrix is a near orthogonal case, uh, uh, we analytically derive that the, uh, the performance of the multi joint transmissions actually can dominate uh, the, uh, the single joint transmissions. So, the, so this is uh, uh, some verifica analytical verification that uh, when the user, ha each user has a near orthogonal enclosed geometry, the multi joint transmissions is more better, uh, has more better performance than the single user joint transmission. Uh, here's our conclusions. Uh, in this paper, we characterize of the dynamic uh, multi joint transmissions, and specifically, we drive the desired channel gain and the lower bound of the uh, SIL distributions. And also, we proved that in near cluster, in cluster geometry, a multi joint transmission dominates single joint transmission. Uh, and this ends my talk. Uh, thank you for your attention. And this ends of my second talk.